cozy in my turtleneck. It's starting to finally feel like fall weather here. I don't know about where you are in the world, but here in New York, fall is upon us, finally. So rehearsal was fun today. I got to see some old friends, some Juilliard classmates that I haven't seen in a long time, and some other friends, other acquaintances. I really like the aspect of playing in an orchestra. I love playing chamber music. I love doing solo stuff, and I also love getting to come together and play in a larger ensemble. I think that's something that I really like about freelancing is that like every week, every day <laughs> is something different. There's always something new and it's, it's always fresh and mixed up. It's not just the same thing every day. So I feel very grateful for that. The other night, something happened that I wanted to share with you all. I was listening to all of the, oh, come here, come here, come here. Hey puppy, come here. Hi. Hi, honey. I went down a deep rabbit hole and listened to basically all of the semi-finalists for the Geneva competition. If you don't know, the Geneva competition is a huge classical music competition. I'm not sure how often the flute category is held, but it happens so many um, years. It's like the Olympics of flute, one of those big international competitions. I was listening to all of the semi-finalist videos I, I mean, I didn't listen to all of them in their entirety. That would have taken hours and hours. But I found myself listening to these videos one after the other, skimming through some of them. But I spent hours just on the couch listening to these videos, watching these videos. Uh, and before I knew it, several hours had passed. And I found myself being very inspired. And I also found myself comparing myself to other players, thinking, oh, I'm to this, to that, not enough this not enough that. And then before I was spiraling too fast, I told myself, stop. It's one thing to be inspired by other players. And I think that's a beautiful thing to listen to others and find inspiration in their playing. And to say, oh, I want to try to make this phrase sound just as beautiful as so-and-so did. Or I want to get my high notes as crystal clear and beautiful as this person. And I think that's great. I think the moment that we start to compare ourselves to these people in a negative way and I think that the the line for this is very fine at least for myself and I kind of have to like check in with myself and see where my headspace is at and the reason I'm sharing this is because I thought that it might resonate with some of you out there because you know as musicians we are perfectionists we are working towards this unattainable ideal of perfection you know that's why we're spending all this time practicing we're always striving to make our plane more beautiful than it was the day before and that's really part of life as a musician or any type of artist and that's okay um, but I think the moment where we start to doubt ourselves or compare ourselves to others, that's where it gets a little murky. And I think that's where it becomes not a very helpful activity. But you know, I think in the past when I was younger, I probably let that type of comparison weigh more heavily on me. Especially when you're young and you're in this school environment, I think that you know, any of you out there who are in conservatory, I think it's a great thing to be so surrounded by music. You're learning every day, you're pushing yourselves. That's where you're, you know, having these formative years that are gonna be your foundation for the rest of everything you do in your musical life. I completely lost my train of thought, but what I am trying to say is that I think that comparison in some cases can be a tool that we use for growth, but like I said, that line is, is very fine from when it becomes toxic and, and when it is something that can be useful. It also just got me thinking that, you know, back when I was much younger, when I was in conservatory, especially in my undergrad, I think that I would have seen these players and been like, wow, if I cannot achieve what they are achieving, you know, I'm not successful. 
and I think that it's important to realize that not everybody can be the winner of the Geneva competition, right? Not everyone can be the principal flute of a major symphony orchestra. I'm not speaking towards people's abilities, I'm sheerly saying that there's just not enough of these things for everyone out there. But what there is enough of is finding your own path that's something that there's always space for, you know? And I think it's easy to kind of put ourselves in a box and to look at traditional career paths, the paths of our teachers or maybe some peers or people that have come before us and to say, hey, if I'm not doing that, I'm not having success. I think it's truly all about perspective. Like you can listen to these top competition winners and think that, well, if I can't play like them, I'm trash, right? But that's not true. That's not the case at all. We all have our own special place. There is enough space in the world and in the music world for everyone and i think that that's a really beautiful thing and i think that's something that was maybe not emphasized enough during my time at school maybe it's different now when they're talking a bit more about like entrepreneurial skills and the complete musician all of that so just an observation i had you know for the most part i was completely inspired by all of these awesome players and it left me wanting to look into some new rap that I haven't learned before and you know nerdy flute stuff. I've been listening to a lot of music lately and a lot of flute playing and I don't always do that. I think sometimes I can feel a little burned out but I'm trying to get back in touch with music that I love because when I was young before school and even in in my undergrad I would just consume so much classical music and other types of music too, but mostly classical music. I was just always listening to something. So I'm trying to get back to that and to just enjoy music because it's really freaking cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, I know, I'm a nerd. But if you're watching my channel, you probably are too. Nice. Oh God, I. You look handsome. All right. I was like, for squeaking so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eh, okay, the rest feels fine. fine. Yeah, 
just load me down. But what's the... Tira, tira, tarim, tarim. No, it's really fast. I can't play it that fast. I don't think anyone can play it that fast. But it's fast. But not as to the half note. Yeah, I know. Per bar. It's really I mean, fast. It's, like this. it's faster. 152. Well, nobody plays it at that tempo, but 152 is. Oh my god! <laughs> you know how I get there? I hear stars and straight. And then I just go a little bit. <laughs> Maybe you know what? I had coffee, so I'm hearing everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. Okay. <laughs>